Space Croutons! Space Croutons, season 3.14. ratio of the circumference of any circle to the diameter of that circle, regardless of the circle size, this ratio will always be complied. Did somebody say pack? The cordax left the residue with powers that were somewhat new. We traveled through both space and time, snow globes and it was sublime. The discs of time are approximately 3.14159265358979323846262 Greetings, friends of Space Croutons. It is I, Curdy Clammerwood, along with our AI expert behind the screen, Sally, reaching out over the airwaves to bring you yet another episode of Space Croutons 3.14. As always, we are coming to you from Van Helsing, our quirky yet sleek and stylish mobile studio. This trusty vehicle has taken us from coast to coast, across the sea, and even to outer space and other dimensions. Now, let's bring in my co-pilot, waiting patiently to say hi. What's the good word, Sally? My good word is huzzah, as today we are following up on a lead regarding the mysterious case of the creepy crouton killer. killer, 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 killer. Oh, is that what we're calling it now? Based on our latest marketing survey, yes, Creepy Crouton Killer, 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 killer. was the clear winner. Well, I can only imagine what the other options might have been. The pernicious podcast perpetrator. 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 Sally. The tenacious transportal terror. 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 Sally. And a personal favorite of mine, the spacey-faced scream catcher. 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 Well, given those choices, I guess Creepy would be my pick too. And we are naming the villain not a moment too soon. It will make our discussion today easier with our guests, a panel of experienced sleuths. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Sally. Before going there, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Quite right, Cordy. Rolling commercial. Attention readers across the universe. The world changed with the invention of the printing press, putting the written word in the hands of the common people. As the technology has improved, we still like the feel of turning the page of the latest intense thriller or pulpy romance. But as the cost of books has skyrocketed and our free time to read has dwindled, books are just sitting on the shelf gathering dust. Well, not anymore. Announcing the next great bibliophilic convenience, half price, half books. A cheaper and more condensed way to while away your luxurious laboratory hours. No longer do you have to pay a high price just to make a commitment to finishing a 400-page piece of historical fiction. Not when you can purchase just the first 200 pages at a reduced cost, reassured that less money, less time takes the pressure off. And if you really like the first half, come back for the second, which we will have waiting for you. Half price, half books makes reading twice the fun. Find us at your local mall or online and get back to reading today. Half price, half books, where catering to your need for convenience makes us lots of money. Where do we find these sponsors, Sally? Actually, Cordy, most of them find us. We have quite the following on Madison Avenue. Well, that's interesting. I'm not sure I knew that before. And knowing that now, I just want to say thanks to those who have reached out to help us stay on the air. It's like my dad used to say. It's important to show gratitude to those in your life, so I'm going to show you how grateful I am once you bring me a beer. By letting you continue to live in my house, get your grateful butt in the kitchen and let me hear that pop, pop, pop. Is now a good time to tell our audience about today's show? I think it's a perfect time, Sally. Why don't you do the honors? Thank you, Cordy. 
Attention Space Crutonians, today, we podcast from a unique institution, a beautiful garden at a lovely communal living facility, as we bring you along with us to speak to residents of the Sherlock Home for Aging Detectives. Please welcome our quartet of guests, famous French detective emeritus Hercule Pujol. Bonjour, mon ami. What to clarify, I am not French, I am Belgian, like the waffle. Next, welcome retired Inspector Morse Code, the most famous criminologist ever to wear Oxfords. To you, Sally, and your listeners. What? Inspector Morse is saying hello in Morse Code. Of course he is. And now we have prolific novelist and avid traveler to places where murder seems to follow, Jessica Belcher. <laughs> Oh, I do beg your pardon, but honestly, just thinking about dead people gives me <clears throat> indigestion. Fascinating. Curdy, I suggest you purchase stock in GasX after we finish the show today. Can you place her at a separate microphone? Is someone way over there? Uh, trust me, it'll be better for everyone. A- and you promised cappuccinos. Where are the cappuccinos? And that is the voice of our fourth and final guest, Nancy Brew, master crime fighter since her teen years. And not to worry, everyone gets their own microphone. And our own cappuccinos. I don't know, wait. I make mine a double espresso. I always drink espresso when I work on a murder case. Oh, yes. Refreshments are certainly in order when death is on the agenda. You. Um, you found me? You said, pardon vous, n'est-ce pas? Uh, of course you did. Now, if I may jump in here to give our listeners some background, the four of you contacted us to say that you have some theories about the mysterious deaths that appear to be connected to our show. Oh, yes. We love to listen to your show. I must say that many of your stories remind me of my own glorious masterpieces. Why, they just leave me lying in a hole six feet deep. (laughs) Huh? She said they slay her. Right. Now I get it. So, now that we've met everyone, let's say we move on to your theories. Ah, oui, monsieur. But to do that, we need you to... Qu'est-ce que ça? Merci, oui. We need you to recap what you know so far, n'est-ce pas? Enough with the Nespa, Pujo. What I want to know is where's the Nescafe? Patience, mon chéri. We are here to discuss murder most foul. And for your information, Nescafe is neither French or Belgian. It is Swiss, you say, say, caffeine. Oh, 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 I'll talk murder, all right. Yours. Uh, Everyone, please. We have guests, not to mention that we are on the air across the entire universe, and more. It's like my brilliant yet motherly heroine Jessica Beecher said in my 13th bestseller, Newly Headless in New Hampshire, losing one's head is not only impolite, but messy as well. So I will thank you to back off, Nancy. Well, uh, why don't we do as Peugeot suggests and recap for you and our listeners. A while back, we received reports that folks involved in some of the stories we presented on Space Croutons were showing up dead. The three mice from the Bunny Fufu story, Raymond Fernandez from Tamaka Serial Killer, and Miss Cleopatra, who was in the Doctor Who's line adventure. We put out the word right away that listeners should be careful when sending in news stories, and that we would investigate and update our audience when we found out what we could. But I must admit, our investigation's gone pretty much nowhere so far. Correct, Curdy. And that is why we did. Da, did, did, da, da, did, da, da, did, you up. You what us up? Rang, we rang you up. Really, Morris, you're wearing on my last nerve. Well, did, did, da, did, did, da, Nancy. (laughs) Ho, 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 he said. No need. I think we all know what he said. I really must apologize for the distasteful discourse of my compatriots. 
Curdy, as Jessica Beecher said in my 27th bestseller, The Drippy Drowned Dilettante, a limited and filthy vocabulary is a direct route to the constabulary. OMG, quit quoting your stupid books, Jess. They're not stupid. Over the years, Jessica Beecher has shown my readers time and again that she is wise and wonderful. And I don't need to point out that that was the very clue that led to the murder, <coughs> excuse me, and helped her solve the case. On fonts alright! Might I suggest that we focus our little brass cells on what Curdy and Mademoiselle Sally came here for today? That's ditto for me. Very well, Curdy. We have been listening to your season 3.14 stories, and we were quite shocked to hear that the lives you mentioned earlier were taken so brazenly by some misanthropic miscreant. We, oui, we, oui, and we commend your fortitude to take on the Herculean past of unmasking the crafty perpetrator, a foe of such magnitude and guile that my blood is shield at the very thought that he or she is still on the loose. So, one afternoon, my spit, da da, dit, dit, da da da. Wait. After a rather spirited game of mahjong, until Nancy threw a fit, upending the table, losing several tiles, and putting privileges for us all for a week. Stop it, old lady. Let's just get to the point. Curdy, we talked over your murder case. You mean the case of the creepy crouton killer? killer, 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 killer. That's right, Sally. And we've noticed something you haven't. Something that could lead to the killer. Really? That's great. What did you notice? Well, it's simple. Yet devious. Yet as plain as the nose on your face. Yet slightly hit. Da, dit, 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 da, dit. Dan, as in hid Dan. What? What is it? What? Curdy, you need to get a clue. Well, that is rude. We came all this way because you said you could help us solve these murders. And now all you've got to say is, Curdy, get a clue? Oh, pardon. You do not, how do you say, catch the drift, you know? What she is trying to say, Curdy, is that you need to get a clue gam. Clue gam? Oh, you mean the game clue? Oui, oui, mon ami. There, now you see clearly now the gam of clue. So what you're saying is that we came all this way for your help and all you want to do is play an old board game? Well, this has been a complete waste of our time. Sally, pack up. We're leaving. Yes, Curdy. Really, Curdy, there is no need to fly off the handle like this. You should know we detectives talk in riddles. Occupational hazard. Dit dit. Apostrophe. Da da. Afraid. When we suggest that you acquire a clue game, what we are getting at is that your perpetrator... The Creepy Crouton Killer. killer, 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 killer. All right. The Creepy Crouton Killer. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Sacre bleu, excusez-vous. And a do to you, too. The Curdy... Your killer is using the game of Clue as a pattern to choose where and how to commit their crimes. Could you run that by me again? We've examined the facts. And researched the evidence. And used our experience to formulate our thoughts. And we've come up with this da di 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 More theory. We've come up with this theory. There. Are you happy now? Okay, okay, you've got my attention. Just how are they using Clue to commit the murders? For example, just how and where were the three field mass dispatches? News reports state they were killed with a carving knife during the opening night gala for their last film, The Three Amiscos Ride Again, at the famous Roseland Ballroom in New York City. In the ballroom with a knife? And what about Miss Cleopatra, a psychic who failed to predict her own demise? Police indicate she was at a private estate, conducting a seance in the formal dining room when the candles blew out. When light was restored they found her deceased. 
bludgeoned with a candlestick. In the dining room with a candlestick? But this could be a coincidence. I, I mean, every mansion could be a clue board. Da da da. Oh. Da da da. K. But now, look at convicted serial killer, Raymond Fernandez. Oh, he was in prison. No clue board there. He was found hanging in the prison library where he worked. In the library, with the rope. Okay, coffee break. And since no one else seems interested, I'll do it myself. Oh, oh, that's better. Impressive. Agreed. I had no idea that she had that espresso machine in her coat. Focus. Curdy, we have also deduced that at least two more of your stories can be connected to the killer. Shanty the cook was in the kitchen. Shot with a revolver. And Sadney from your rap episode. His body was recovered from a deserted building that was once a full table factory. His head bashed in with a metal plumber's tool. In the billiard room was a wrench of a monkey, Nesta. If what you're saying is true, then that leaves one weapon. Da, did 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 lead pipe. And four potential crime scenes. The conservatory, the hall, the study, and the lounge. I can run a data analysis on the other season 3.14 episodes to look for matches to these. Good idea, Sally. We can do the same with any news stories we receive. Listen, folks, I apologize for my outburst before. With the information you've given us, we may just be able to stop this villain before they take someone else's life. Well, as Jessica Beecher said in my last and most highly praised bestseller, you are what you eat on a cannibal cruise. Happy to help, but no second helpings, please. <clears throat> and there is more of me. If you recall, the clear board has secret passages from the corner rooms so that the perpetrator and the detectives have hidden routes through the mansion. We believe that your story regarding the flash dance mob confirms that the killer is using transporters when needed to reach some of their victims. Hence the transporting up of the five dancers at the end. That also explains how he or she has been able to repeatedly reach Shanti, the cook, in her time loop. You know what Jessica Beecher always says, travel enriches the soul, even when deceased. <coughs> did it. I've also taken the liberty of contacting your young friend, Siever, and together we've decoded the cipher message he received in your last episode. Well, that's great. See, Sally, we humans still got it. What does the message say, Morse? I'm at work in your midst. Friends will fall. Will you be next? The goat. The goat? The goat, or greatest of all time. Sounds like the killer's ego is showing. <laughs> Friends of yours, Jessica? Why don't you make yourself a cyanide latte and get off my back? Thanks for the decoded message, Morse. And what about suspects? If you've been listening, then you must have some suspects. Indeed, there are a few individuals we wish to know more about. Uh, for example, the mysterious serial killer involved with the victim Fernandez. Hmm. Did toe to that, Peugeot, as well as that funny Fufu character who might just be a Jeffrey Dahl Murph type. In my mind, that invisible detective who tossed the woman from the roof of the flour mill, my lovely Jessica Beecher would be able to see right through him. That does it. <laughs> Look out, I'll see us fine to spin on Jessica. Did 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 da 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 did 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 makes me grind you into a grande. And as our four super sleuths tussle off into the sunset, it's time for Sally and me to get back on the road. Where will we podcast next? Who knows? One thing is certain. Creepy crouton killer, we're coming for you. And to the rest of our listeners, as always, keep peace in your heart till our next story time. If you want to join in, I might have to have some hints. Tell your friends and neighbors, we'll be adding capers to the space group on season 3.14. Let's go! Space Square. Pie around. 
see, but very light and breezy. I love it supersonic, but very planetonic. Space Crew Tom, season 3.14. Come on! Space Crew Tom, season 3.14. Again! Space Crew Tom. Space Croutons is a work of original fiction. Similarity to persons, situations, or events, real or fictional, is coincidental and unintentional. Created and written by Jerry, Jace, John, Della, and Jeff Goodson. Episode story by Jeff. Original music by Della, Jeff, John, and Jerry. Production by Jeff. Featuring the voice talents of Patsy Puckett, Jerry, Jean, John, Jeff, and Sally. Entire work copyright 2022 by John, Jeff, Jerry, Della, and Jace Goodson. This has been a Goodrich Audio Production.